Growing up, my, my mom was an artist and she, uh, her, her job was teaching art and she did stained glass and she painted uh, porcelain dolls and that sort of thing. But I think for me the uh, stained glass stood out the most. And I mean, I loved doing art in general, but there was something about the colors and, and the, the way I would work with my hands that I really enjoyed. And it was just a big part of my childhood and I, and I loved it, but then, you know, things kind of turned around in my life and I lived on the streets for about uh, almost five years. Towards the end of the five years, I thought, you know, I gotta change my life, I have to do something different. And so I went to university and I took business, and then I got you know, my stockbroker's license and all that sort of stuff because I thought, oh, okay, these guys make money and that's what people need to be happy, is money. I became a mortgage broker, actually, after a while. And I, just, you know, I was going to work, I did well at it, and, but I came home and it was just like, something was missing, I felt empty, you know. I watched Exit through the gift shop and I saw how he became an artist, and, he had never done art before, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna buy a canvas tomorrow. So I bought a canvas, and the next day, I, it was like 1.30 in the morning, but I had no paint, but I had a stack of magazines and some newspapers, so I started, you know, doing some collage, and I remembered some of the techniques I had learned with stained glass, and I had no intentions of selling it. It was just like, I was super happy. I would go to work the next day, and I would think about like what I was gonna make the next day, and I had no more focus for work. It was just like, I was obsessed. I had a friend who came by and said, you know, do you mind if we hang this in a restaurant? And I said, yeah, sure, of course. I said, but you know, don't sell it, because I thought, I don't know what people would think about it. And he goes, just, you know, whatever, we'll put it up. So he put it in the restaurant, and he called me like four days later, and he says, I sold your picture. And I said, no. I said, why'd you sell it? He goes, they paid 14 grand for it. And I thought, I'll never have that feeling again, you know. So, and it wasn't the money. It was just the fact that I felt like there was an out in my life that I could, hey, maybe I can make a career out of this, you know. Here with Napoleon, you see a little bit of the love story between him and uh, Marie Antoinette. These are original newspapers from 1799 that are uh, actually about Napoleon. Napoleon commissioned Brigade to make a watch for Marie Antoinette, so these are the watch gears from her watch. Uh, there's some French war boats here. And then this is Marie Antoinette's handwritten will, uh, sort of on his chest over his heart. And then uh, this is the French map from that era, French gold bars, uh, silver bars from that era. This is a red dress that she wore as well. Everything is black paper, including the black lines, all, all handmade. I love comic books, so you'll see a lot, even like this, this has nothing to do with Napoleon, but this is, this is part of me in the picture. It just reminds me of my childhood, and I, I loved them as I was a kid, so it's something I never kind of grew out of. The thing is, too, I don't really draw most of this out. It's, it's all built like a sculpture, so I'll cut and paste and build things as I go and layer them, and sometimes people will think they're prints, but and that's like the, the worst thing I can think of, but no, they're actually all made by eye and by hand. I remember at first, when I first started, I, I thought, oh, how am I gonna come up with these ideas for the rest of my career, you know? I, I worried about it every day. Am I gonna run out of ideas? And, but it's funny, once you do one thing, it makes you think about something else, and just constantly, now I have too many ideas. And, so now the idea is just to get them all out. I work more now than I've ever worked before, but it's not work at all, it feels like. I literally, to put this show together, I worked seven months every single day, no days off. I've been out for five days now, I already miss doing it. It's funny, the, coming into the show, the friends are calling me and they're saying, oh, you know, you must be so excited. And I'm not at all. Because I'm just thinking about the 900 things that have to be done, and I'm just uh, focused on the artwork and everything being perfect and that sort of stuff. So it was really last night towards the end of the party where I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. You know? That's, that's when you get to enjoy it, when you see everybody that's happy and the, and the reactions, but that's, that's when the excitement happens. It's after for me. Is there something, you know, looking back that you feel really speaks to how you got here? Yeah, it's lots of hard work and never listen to anybody who tells you something's not going to happen because people told me I was crazy. You know, it's hard to be an artist or to be successful in art or, or in anything. If you really believe in something and you really just picture it in your head, it'll happen. Uh, everything I've pictured has come true, which is really weird. Yeah.